proudly introduce to you from Hopbon, Pennsylvania, the owners of Cully Mount Farms, Richard and Cheryl Williams. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're so happy to be back here at Winter Springs. It's always a great joy to show our dogs off here to you today. The sheep are really wondering what in the world is going on here. These sheep just came out of a field of about 500, and we brought four or five of them here just to put them in the middle of this arena, and they're all they're all wondering what in the world this is all about. And so anyway, I would like to say to you, first of all, that Border Collies, of course, originated from the border countries of England, Scotland, and Wales, and they were called Border Collies for that reason. They were obviously bred down to become the best herding dogs in the world. The Border Collie, if you remember, last year when we came, we brought Mick to see you. He was a young, young Border Collie, not quite a year old, and we showed you what he can do on the sheep. And he got really, really excited, and y'all loved him so much, we thought we'd bring him back and show him to you this year and see what he's doing. So I'm going to have Dick do just a little bit of balance work with him and demonstrate what's natural in the border collie. And you can see that Mick is still very keen. <laughs> Ready to go. A tricolored, freckled face, really nice border collie, by the way. He was in the nursery national finals of the United States Border Collie Handlers Association. And he can't even see where he's going because all he sees is sheep. And you can see that he's pretty excited. And he's showing that what balance is all about. Balance is mainly keeping the sheep to Dick as much as possible. Trying to keep um, a good distance between he and the sheep and the dog. And Dick's having to kind of talk to him a little bit. All of this is very exciting to the dogs, you have to understand. It's very, very exciting with all the noise and the people. But this is Mick, and he is still showing very nicely what he can do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we'll just tell you that we liked Mick so much that we went back and bought his brother, Nick. This is Nick right here with me, and I want to show you Nick. He is only six months older than Nick, and it's we call them the Ick brothers. But anyway, we're going to try to work just a couple of minutes. We're going to try to work them both. We'll see what happens. I don't promise anything. Let's just see what happens. As you can see, Nick looks a lot like Mick, and they'll work a lot alike as well. He's a little bit older, so he's got a little bit more, a little bit more uh, finesse. <laughs> But you'll see that they work very much alike. It's going to be hard for me to work him and talk, so I'll try just to work him for a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have Dick send for these sheep, and then we'll just trade off. We'll trade. He'll take his sheep. I'll take mine. Lie down, Dick. Now, if you'll note, he should pay no attention to Dick's whistles. You stay. Mick. And you see Nick saying, okay, go ahead, take him. And what we'll do then is we'll just trade off and I'll take him back, hopefully. We'll see how he goes. And you can see they're both very fast and very more, very much alike. <laughs> He's so anxious. And there they are, Mick and Nick. <laughs> now if we can just get them put away. <laughs> But one's a tricolor, one is uh, black and white, it makes no difference. 
what color they are, what, what size they are, anything of the kind. The only thing that matters to us is how they work. <laughs> Okay. Border Collies Aww. are bred to work, and that's what they do. I knew that would happen, sorry. Um, so I wanted you to just see that there's a lot of different kinds of Border Collies and a lot of different ways that they can work. You folks who have been here before remember Mark. Mark is also very keen to work, and he forgets that he's not a puppy. He is eight years old, and he still works just like he was when he was young. A Merle Border Collie is not as often seen in the Border Collie world, in the herding world, mainly because originally in Scotland they would say that a Merle dog wasn't worth its weight in gold, so they would just usually either get rid of them or sell them or put them down. So they, we now have seen a lot more Merle Border Collies here in the United States, and we're kind of happy to see them. I'm going to have Dick now demonstrate the commands to you. We now, you saw the, how the dogs work with natural balance. You saw how the natural balance can bring the sheep to you and how he can keep the sheep with you. Now we'll add some words to that movement. Okay, so we're going to go to his, um, we're going to go counterclockwise. So we'll go away to me. So he gave him those words, away to me. The words are still used today, the same as they were back hundreds of well, years ago, the and Probably. the commands are the same. We're expecting the same kind of response from the dog. Now, you see how much nicer and quieter he is. Now, look at the sheep. Look at the sheep are now calm, and they're calm because he's staying back off the sheep. He's staying quiet, and this is what we're looking for. We're trying to get those dogs, and we hope that Nick and Mick next year will work a little bit more like this, and he, they will. Our next command will be to walk up onto the sheep, and we'll ask him to walk up very quietly. He'll also give him maybe a take time, and that's why he's slowing down, just to progress onto the sheep quietly. <clears throat> then we'll give him a come by command, or a clockwise command. Come by, and we'll want him again to stay out and keep going until he tells him to stop. We'll ask him to lie down, and again walk up. And then we'll ask him to take the sheep away from himself and drive them down to the other end of the field. Because at this point, we're still in the process of fetching to you. This is what's natural in the Border Collie. Now we're taking the sheep away. When we start taking the sheep away, we start saying like that the dog has to start listening to our commands completely. So we'll, he, what he's going to do now is he's going to move off the sheep, and Merck is, of course, anticipating him at this point. But the command that they usually hate the most is, that'll do, or finish your work, return to me. All right, Merck. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. They love to hear you clap. Thank you. Okay, now we want some distance added to this work that we have. We've got some commands. Now let's make them in a distance. So you'll see that... Um, Richard is wearing a whistle, and he's going to use that Mom, whistle like to give him the same commands we just did. Let's go clockwise. Yeah. Now, he used a wheat, wheat kind of command. You can use several different kinds of commands. Mine will be different. He asked him to lie down, and he asked him to walk up, and he's asking him to take his time. You'll, give, you'll hear different whistles. If you can hear them over the music, there's, there's little little difference in the nuance of the whistle which makes the difference in how the dog responds. Okay, we'll stop him and we'll ask him to go come by or clockwise and we'll stop him and we'll ask him to go way to me or counterclockwise and you see the dog going nice and wide around the sheep. You see the sheep watching all the time. Where is that dog? What is he doing? They're not concerned. They're just, I'm, I'm sorry, they're not frightened. They're just concerned. And that's what you want. You want them to be nervous about the dog, but not frightened of the dog. Okay, now we're going to ask the dog to come off the sheep, or that'll do. Good boy, Merck. care what color he is, do you? <laughs> As you can see, he's 
good working dog. If you can get a good Merle working dog, you've made a lot of progress. So that's really great. Our next dog we're going to be bringing back out is actually Merck's half-sister. Her name is Lass, and you'll be very surprised to see that she doesn't look at all like Merck. They're out of, both out of Andy. Andy is also the father of that little puppy that was walking around here earlier, and uh, you saw her. I want you to see the difference in the style. Look at how Lass works. This is a very <laughs> predator kind of style. She's got her head down, her tail down, and she's crawling up onto the sheep very, very stalk-like. And that that is what's moving those sheep. That eye, her looking, that hypnotic gaze on those sheep, and the way she is walking is moving those sheep. Now, in agility, you have web uh, weave poles. So any of you who think you'd like to try some weave poles with some sheep, we're welcome to give you're welcome to do it at home. It's perfectly all right. We're going to try it right here. We're going to see how Lass does. We're going to see if we can put these sheep through those poles out there and see how they do. Now, this is not an easy task, by the way, but we are going to be using those commands that we just taught you. So he's going to be bringing the sheep down around the white post. Hopefully they'll come around. They're going to see that flag and be a little concerned about it, which is good. That just gives her a little bit more difficulty. She's going to bring the sheep around. She's got to, he's got to make a quick turn. That was good. Nice turn. Let's see if he makes it through here. All right. Now it's got to be a quick one. All right. Good job. Good job. Let's try again here. Oh, quick, 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 quick. There we go. We caught him. <laughs> they get faster as they go. Sheep figure out these poles. All right. And we got one more. And we're going to go down around the end. And we'll be, see if we get it. We got it. Very good job. Very good. that you're looking at, actually not these four dogs, but three of these four dogs that you're looking at today, <clears throat> we're in the top four in the country this year in herding. So you're looking at some pretty quality dogs here, and uh, I hope that you are getting a chance to enjoy them. You'll see that there's a lot of different difference in the way they work and what they do. And so what, what would happen is... <laughs> One, yeah, back in the 1800s, the beginning of competitions, about 1837, I believe it was, where there was a first competition in Scotland, and the competitions now are all over the United States and Canada, as well as all over the countries over in Europe and in Scotland. Dick right now is setting up a little course for us. We're going to try to show you what a competition would be like, and it's going to be in a very small area. But just if you can picture this area representing a huge field on a huge hill somewhere, and that would be the actual competitions that we show in. So if you'll, I'll turn this over to Dick and we'll see if we can show you some competition. Thank you very much. Uh, I have to say, we really appreciate your attendance at our exhibition. We really do. It uh, does us proud. We spend 12 months a year training, working with dogs. And when you They're have a crowd like this, it certainly makes it worthwhile in the year. This is the dog named Spot. He's in your program. He's a white factor border collie. He speaks with a brogue. He's from Ireland. Yes, uh, Spot has been as high ranked as, I believe, number four in the United States. He's competed at the Nationals. Every year that he's been in the country, he's been here for about five years now. He's an exceptionally good dog. What Cheryl's going to do is she's going to push the sheep down toward the end of the field. Now, the Nationals this year were held at the Belgrove Plantation in Winchester, right just south of Winchester, Virginia. Vision this field at about 150, 200 acres and about 800 yards away. If you can vision that pond beyond the pond, put another 100 or 200 yards on that. That's how far we drew the sheep for the National Finals. We had about 800 sheep every one of the top 150 competitors in the United States and Canada had five fresh sheep. So everybody had their own, which was kind of neat. All right, Cheryl's going to go to the post, where she's standing there now. 
she can send her dog either to the right or to the left. She's sending Spot to the right. The judge is looking for a pear-shaped outrun, which is what you're seeing there, absolutely nice. And notice how the sheep respect Spot, but they're not spooky or afraid of him. It's a prey-predator relationship, what you witness here. All right, now she, the first obstacle then would be those two little panels right there. And Spot's doing a good job there. Notice Spot works the sheep in a much more upright position. He's quite small for a male border collie. Extremely talented dog. Bringing the sheep down. These sheep are a Katahdin Dorper cross. They're hair sheep. And yes, you might see there might be a little ram in there. All right, now she's going to turn the post. Notice she's using mostly whistles. If she has to correct the dog, if, if Spot's not listening, she might give him a, say his name, such as a thing. Now, this is the, the drive. It's something we teach the Border Collie. Border Collies are gathering dogs. Notice how much in control Spot is. Cheryl is controlling Spot with her whistle. Her whistles are slightly different than mine. Now, let's see if she makes that panel. All right. The sheep get kind of a little goosey at the panel. Here we go. Nice turn. Very nicely done, Cheryl. Going to bring it back down through the center again. Seems like I've lost my dog here. I guess I haven't. Now, if you notice, while Cheryl's working Spot here, so nice and quiet. Now, Spot is a veteran. Uh-oh. There, you hear that? Tweet, tweet, tweet. Spot was a little bit on the uh, missing the gate on that panel, but she made it back where it's there and come around again. If you think this is easy, I'd like to have some of the children come out here and try to put these sheep around the field. They have great respect for the dog. This is a challenge right here now. If you remember two years ago, we had the sheep literally trying to go after the dogs. These sheep may do that. They're not accustomed to the border collie. They come from a flock of about 500. Now she's going to drive down to the far right. In competition, it's it's the lines and the make the panels is what judges the best runs. All right. Notice each time Spot goes to their heads, they stop. One thing that's quite dangerous when you're running in a competition, you do not want to head the sheep that often. If you head them too much, they will turn and fight because it's a fight or a flight situation. So you want to just keep the control of the border collie. Spot is controlling the sheep with his eye. They have walnut-colored eyes. As I said, they're gathering dogs. This is this is absolutely beautiful what he's doing here. And around and through again. Very nicely done. Are you going to do a shed or a split, Cheryl? She's going to attempt to split the sheep apart. They might be quite difficult. This is the first time these sheep have been away from home. What she's going to do is she's going to set herself as a wall of pressure. Spot will be on the opposite side. If it happens, it will happen real fast. Spot's going to get closer and closer. What you might think if Spot grabs a hold of the sheep, what might happen in competition? They get disqualified. Here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Hold it on there, Spot. Very nice. Very nice. Very difficult to do. She's going to try one more time, are you, Cheryl? Yeah, one more time? Let's get it one more time. All right? There he goes. That's a successful hold right there. All right. Very good, Cheryl. Thank you. Now, as difficult as it was, the first time we put these sheep in the trailer yesterday morning, it took us about a half an hour with two border collies, and we had almost a fence on both sides so they couldn't escape. So let's see now if Cheryl can get them in the pen. All right, we'll see. Hopefully they're going to say, I want to get off this field away from all the people. They came from a farm up just outside of Brantford, Florida. As they say, they're Katahdin and Dorpers. They're hair sheep. Katahdins were developed in the state of Maine. They're very hardy. They're raised for their meat. After our show, if you have any questions concerning Border Collies or your dog in general, we'll be glad to answer them for you. All right, now, this is a critical point here now. They still don't see that's the place to go. Cheryl is trying to eliminate all other opportunities. I've seen the sheep at exhibitions such as this jump the fence, get out through the crowds. They do all sorts of things. So if the sheep do come near you in the crowd, uh-oh, that's a no-no on Spot's part. 
if the sheep do come near you, simply turn your back to them. Don't try running or anything like that. They'll be fine once we get them in the pen. All right? Now try to get them in the pen. Almost in the pen. Ah, uh, close the gate. Get all the